Hi, I'm Colter Control with the RULH Dual Credit Multimedia Programs, and I'm here with Steve Newman, who was the World Walker from 1983 to 1987. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well. That's good. Uh, tell me, how did you come up with the idea to walk the entire world? Well, I, I always wanted to be a writer, and uh, when I was a young boy, I decided it wouldn't it be a great story if you took a walk around the world and met the people up close and, and maybe lived with some of them. And uh, I decided that that would make a great writing project. And so uh, I determined never to give up on that dream. And sure enough, uh, when I was 28 years old, I decided to quit my regular newspaper job and make the whole world my office for a while. And, and I did it. That's, that's very cool that you were able to follow a dream like that. Uh, did you ex encounter any hardships along the way? Oh God, yes. Uh, the the walk around the world at times was like something out of Indiana Jones. You know, wars, uh, tribes, uh, plagues, uh, natural disasters like floods and sandstorms, uh, uh, politics, to, and great beauty, great mystery, romance. Uh, yes, it had a little bit of everything, and it was a great challenge. Uh, can you tell me one of your favorite experiences from the walk? One of my favorite ones? Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, let me think, there's so many of them. Um, well, this, this one actually has a combination of, of uh, one of my favorite uh, times and one of my scariest times. When I was, when I was walking uh, uh, down to Thailand, which is down by the equator over by China, uh, there were two road bandits waiting for me and it was nighttime when I was walking because it was so hot during the day and uh, and I saw them just as they sprang out of the weeds by the road they had machetes and they were going to try to kill me they swung at me and they would have killed me except that they kept hitting my backpack which had a steel frame on it uh, a metal frame they hit that metal frame with their machetes I mean they came literally within an inch of, of cutting my head off and uh, I managed to get away from that uh, when a truck came along, a, a little Toyota pickup truck, and scared them off into the jungle. And, and then as I, the next day as I was going further through the jungle, I met a monk, a Buddhist monk, who, who could see that, that I was tired and scared and lonely. And he asked me if I needed to rest, and I said yes. And, and so for two weeks I stayed in the monastery with the other monks, just them and me. And uh, every night it would thunder and lightning and rain and, and uh, none of them spoke English except the head monk. And I would meet with him each evening in the caves there and ask him questions and he would answer them for me. And, uh, and it, it was like something out of a novel, something much larger than real life. And uh, after a couple of weeks in deep in the jungle with those monks, I was able to continue my journey. And, and, and go on and make it eventually, you know, to, to all of Thailand. But uh, that, that's, that's the kind of uh, stories that were very common on my walk around the world. Because when you walk through billions of people, as I did, on foot, you're so vulnerable. Everybody can come up to you, including killers, and, uh, and interact with you. And so, I, I, I literally, during those years I was walking around the world through all those people, I, I saw everything from childbirth to murder. And uh, it, was, it was a great story. And I'm um, assuming this whole experience has changed your life. Yeah, oh yes, yes, it's changed my life very much. Uh, I'm still, in a sense, living on that walk around the world. It's been over 40 years since I came back to Ohio, to Bethel, Ohio, in Claremont County there, uh, and finished my journey. Uh, but. I've I've been you know done books been in been in films on TV and been in documentaries traveled the world dozens of more times you know to promote products or to explore other parts of the world that and w with other people paying for me to do that um, I, in a sense I've never left that journey. And uh, did you envi envision your life being this way? Did you envision being famous? No, no, not at all. Uh, for me, the walk around the world was not a, a, a way to get famous or to set a record or anything like that. I could, care, I could care nothing about that stuff. 
For me, it was just a, a way for me as a journalist to get a good story. And, um, and I fully expected to come back to, to Ohio and to hang up my walking shoes and go back to work as a newspaper reporter. But you know what? I never had the opportunity to go back to work because so many people wanted me to, to share that story with them, you know, through speeches and films and books and things like that. And uh, did you always want to be an author? Yes. Yes? Ever since I was, uh, uh, you know, young little kid, I, I loved books. I had a great love of, of reading. Um, I used to spend a lot of my, my uh, youth in the local library, way back in the corner, reading adventure books and travel books and, and, and National Geographics and things like that. What about... Uh your other hobbies as like a professional speaker, have you always envisioned yourself doing that as well? <laughs> oh, I never envisioned myself being a speaker. Uh, I was actually, believe it or not, I was actually one of the shyest kids in school. And, uh, and I was the skinniest kid, I think, in Claremont County. Uh, and um, and I, in other words, I, wasn't, I, I was not attractive. I was shy. I was gangly, all arms and legs, and and I never envisioned that uh, that I would have the nerve to stand up in front of thousands of people, and and uh, tell them stories and make them laugh and cry. I didn't think I had that in me. Do you enjoy doing it? Oh yes, I love it very much. I love uh, entertaining people, but also more than that, I love changing people's lives. Uh, as a public speaker and as an author, uh, I've had the opportunity to touch millions of people over the years, all over the world. I, 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 just a couple years ago, I did a 13-city tour in China, speaking, you know, and every, every night, you know, full uh, auditorium, standing room only, all young people. And I know that a lot of those people left there with their lives changed and, and more determined than ever to, to see the world and to travel and to get out of their shell like I did. And, uh, and so that's very, very satisfying, knowing that I've changed a lot of lives. Uh, in a previous interview I watched of yours, you expressed a dislike for planned events. You said a lot of your walk was very unplanned. Very Why good. is that? Very good, Coulter. I, I like it when people do Research, <laughs> very good. Um, uh, I just knew intuitively as, as a writer that the best stories are those that are unexpected, that are spontaneous, that are not rehearsed or uh, you know, planned ahead. And so when I walked around the world, um, I never knew what was gonna happen every day. Each day I had no idea what was going to happen, whether I was going to get one mile of, of walking down the, the, the roads or the mountain paths, or if I was going to get maybe 30, 30 miles of walking in that day. Um, I left myself completely vulnerable to the world. And, uh, and I, I just knew intuitively that that, that was going to help me to meet all kinds of fascinating people that I otherwise might not meet. You know, most Americans, when they travel overseas, and I'm guilty of that too nowadays with my wife, they, they have a place already to stay. Yeah. You know, it's usually a holiday inn or something like that with a pool and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and they eat at certain restaurants with the, where the other Americans eat and all that stuff. And, uh, and, and all in all, their vacation is very safe and nothing really unexpected or terrible or stressful happens. It's all planned. It's all planned. But see, I wanted uh, stressful things to happen. I wanted dangerous things to happen. I wanted uh, uh, to meet crazy people as well as ordinary people because it's that mixture uh, of all those different varieties of people and places that make life so fascinating and make for a good story. How did you win the uh, Ohio University's Medal of Merit? Well, you know, it's funny you should say that. Uh, um, I went to Ohio University because they had one of the top journalism schools in the country. And, um, and, and 
I remember that uh, a lot of people telling me that I would never make it in college because I was too hyperactive, I was uh, too shy, too insecure. Uh, I was not a great student. I was at best a C student. Uh, I flunked a, a lot of classes in high school. Um, and people told me, don't even think about going to college. But I, but I wanted to be that writer and I needed the training. And, and Ohio University had some of the best writing professors and journalists in the country teaching there. And so somehow they, they accepted me and I got in and, uh, and graduated with high honors actually. And then later after I walked around the world, I received one of their highest honors, the Medal of Merit. Um, but the lesson in that culture is that, remember everybody told me, I couldn't go to college, that I couldn't make it, that it was that I wasn't smart enough to go to college. Uh, and, and, and you won their most prestigious And yet award. I end up winning one of their most prestigious honors. Yeah. Uh, so you never really know uh, what someone's capable of until they actually go for it, you know. Yeah. You, and if you meet somebody who has a dream, you know, encourage them, give them encouragement. At the very least, they may they may have more inside them than what you can see on their outside. Yeah, I agree. It's good to it's good to give people a way to go forward with their dreams and help them out. Yeah, and that's that's what our our society here in America is all about. It's about dreams. Yeah, it's about people land of opportunity. Yes, having dreams and and having the freedom and the chances to go after those dreams and make them reality. And that's why we're such a great country to be to you know because of all these people doing these seemingly impossible things in our country. Yeah. And uh also in previous interviews you've stated that uh you have a love for creativity. Yeah, oh yes. Uh um I think life is a very special gift. I think that uh, we should spend all our time while we're here celebrating and exploring and, and uh, uh, enjoying and, and reveling in the incredible, you know, things that make up life. And, uh, and that includes creativity. Try to leave, I believe, you should try to leave the world uh, a more interesting and, and a better place than it was when you were born into it. Yeah. And that's why I, I think pe we should never discourage people's creativity. But what about people who maybe aren't as creative as others, but they still want, they still want to do fun and successful things like you have? What, was advi or what is advice that you would give to them? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, if you can't walk around the world, you just don't have the skill to do that or the, or, or the energy to do that. Well, guess what? You can still, in a sense, do it by reading, reading the books from people who do stuff like that, from who climb mountains and explore Antarctica or sail the seas or walk around the world. You know, most of those people end up doing movies and books and things like that. You can live vicariously through their creativity, yeah. through their creations. So sometimes other people are creative enough to where you can learn through their creativity. Yeah, you know, you know I, I recently uh, was in Africa and, and uh, climbed with seven other people Mount Kilimanjaro the tallest mountain in Africa. And, uh, oh my God, it was, it was, oh, it was hard. And, you know, very little oxygen when you get to the top. It, it's like the Arctic up there, it's freezing cold and glaciers and everything, and dangerous and stuff. Uh, and, uh, but, um, but I, I, I was, I did it, even at the age of 62, uh, I did it, because I had read all those books as a young boy, and, and even though maybe I'm not a mountaineer, and probably shouldn't have done that, uh, I still wanted to do it so badly that, that I, I uh, overcame my fears and doubts, pushed them aside, and went ahead and did it. And uh, so that's why you know, I'm saying, you know, if you feel you can't do something, well just, just read about what other people have done and maybe they'll inspire you so much that, that 
you will try something, something I got you. similar. Try to inspire some creativity of your own. Yes, try to inspire some gum, some some ambition and creativity yeah. of your own. Yeah. Now, are you still doing any freelance writing, or have you been completely consumed no, by the projects? I, no, I don't do any writing anymore. Uh, I've gotten too lazy. <laughs> I, no, my wife and I own a, a, a very beautiful place outside of Ripley, and here in Ohio, in Ohio, and. Uh, it's it's like a little touch of paradise, you know, 25 acres and and creeks and rivers and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and I I just relax and read books and and enjoy myself and take hikes with the dog. I I earned it, believe me. I earned uh, it. Walking for four years nonstop, I'd say you definitely did earn it. Thank you for talking with me today, oh, Steve. It was a you. pleasure meeting with you. Thank with you. you, and I will see all of you next time. Yo, 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 yo,